running microservices is complicated. Even worse, if you look at the pricing documents of the various cloud providers out there, you're probably gonna come to a unanimous conclusion. This shit is expensive. And it's not just the infrastructure cost that burns to our pockets. There's also the operational cost of DevOps to keep our applications up and running. Luckily, there's a better way to achieve all of this. And it's called serverless. God, this is so exciting. Serverless is all about you taking your microservices and handing it over to the cloud provider to run it. All aspects of infrastructure, including the operational efforts required to keep your app running, is completely abstracted. The best part, you're built only for the time your application actually uses. So if my app doesn't have much traffic, I don't really have to pay anything. The generous free tier which usually comes along with serverless solutions will cover me till I reach a decent scale. Okay, so now quite a few of you are probably thinking of AWS Lambda or Google Cloud Functions or some other functions as a service offering. Yes, those things are serverless, but it isn't what serverless is all about. And you can't even build your entire application using a functions as a service. Wouldn't it be great to harness the power of serverless without having to change the way we write code? I mean, why can't we simply hand over our container images, which we hopefully have already, and let the cloud worry about running it? This is called a container as a service, and the one that we'll be talking about today is Google's Cloud Run. Cloud Run is by far the best container as a service out there, at least in my opinion. Actually, I'm gonna go out on a limp and say that GCP has probably made the best serverless solution ever. Don't trust me? Okay, let's take Cloud Run for a spin so that you can see it for yourself. Like I mentioned earlier, a container as a service is all about running containers. And you can containerize anything. It could be a Java Spring Boot app, an express server written in Node.js, or even some weird unsupported language like Ballerina. I'm gonna stick with a simple service written in Go. Here's my app. It's a simple greeter service. The only thing special about it is that I'm taking the port to start the server on via an environment variable. This is a minor cloud run quirk, but don't worry, you can change this behavior if you want to. The only two prerequisites we need to worry about is to have a GCB project set up and to have gcloud pre-installed and configured. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's deploy our app. Simply run gcloud run deploy reader. That's the name of our service. It's gonna ask you to enable the Cloud Run API if it wasn't already. Just hit yes for this and all the remaining questions. So since Go is a supported language, we don't even have to worry about containerizing our app. Cloud Run will use Cloud Build to do it for us. The output container image will be stored in an artifact registry. Don't worry about any of this. The point is, all these steps are fully automated for you as long as you're using one of the supported languages. And there are quite a few of them. Great, our app is now live. Let's just try to hit the endpoint it spit out to see if it really works. It does. Heading over to the Cloud Run UI, we can see that our greeter service is indeed live. We can explore this further to see what metrics are being collected. We can even head over to the logs to see the logs. Apart from all of this, Cloud Run has also configured an auto scaler to scale our apps in case the load increases. It can even scale our app down to zero when there is no traffic. Just to be clear, we're getting all of this by simply running a single command. How cool is that? Moving on, I've got two major problems with the approach we just saw. First, I don't want to lose control of building the container image. I mean, my CI job is probably already doing that. No need for Cloud Run to do it again. Second, how do we configure our app? I mean, how do we set the CPU and memory constraints, set the scaling limits, or even configure the secrets? Doing all of this via CLI flags isn't really practical. I should be able to put all of this in some YAML file to configure things declaratively. The answer to these questions is hidden on the Cloud Run UI. Over to the YAML tab, we can see all the knobs that we've got to configure our app. And if you notice carefully, this YAML structure seems a lot like a Kubernetes resource object. And it's not just a random custom resource Google has come up with. This is the service resource defined by Knative. Okay, that is probably too much information. Just remember the word Knative. We'll circle back to it in a bit. Back to our terminal, we can export our service configuration as a YAML file by running a single command. Let's check if it worked. Cool, that's one issue resolved. Now let's try to manually build an image and deploy that using this config file. I'm gonna copy this image name really quick. 
We'll also need to change something in our app. So I'm gonna change the default greeting. Okay, back to our terminal. Let's build a new image using Cloud Build. Paste the image we had copied earlier and let's just change the tag name. Oh, by the way, Cloud Build is Google's serverless CI CD solution. There's gonna be a video coming out on that soon, so it's probably a good time to subscribe. Seems like our build is done. Let's update the image name mentioned in the service.yaml file. The revision name as well. That's it. Back to the terminal to update our app using this new config file. It will take a few seconds and it's done. Let's just hit the exposed endpoint again to confirm the change. It works just like that. Hold on a minute. There's a typo here. This is bad. So how do I roll back? Or even better, how do I progressively release my application to prevent everyone from seeing such a mistake? Well, this is where the concept of revision comes in. Whenever we deploy a new version of our application, we are basically creating a new revision of it. Think of revisions as separate deployments of our app. And don't worry, since everything is serverless, our old revisions will never be running. They're just there in case we ever need them again. Let's list all the revisions of the Greeter app. As you may expect, we've got two revisions here. To solve the problem of progressive delivery, let's head over to our service.yaml file. Over to the traffic section, and let's just split our traffic between our two revisions. I'll keep it 50-50 for now. This way I can control or limit the exposure of my latest revision, or simply roll back to a previous revision if things go downhill. Let's apply the updated configuration. It's gonna take some time. It's done. If we hit our endpoint again a couple of times, you'll see that the traffic is being split between both our revisions equally. Okay, I know, this is fairly manual and it cannot be called progressive delivery, but it's a good starting point. Anywho, you can refer to my previous video on progressive delivery to know more. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. I think it's pretty clear that Cloud Run not just helps us save up on the infrastructure costs, but also it makes operations a hell lot easier. Now before you go, as with any cloud offering, it's important to understand how the service is built. Now you may think that you are going to be built for as long as your application runs. You're technically correct, but what does that even mean? Assuming that you've got no containers running, whenever you get an incoming request, Cloud Run will take up some time to spin up a new container. This is called a cold start. Then your app enters the startup phase, which is basically the time your app takes to start listening for incoming connection. After this, Cloud Run forwards the request to your app. Even if your app is done processing the request, the container will still keep running for a couple of minutes. Eventually, it will shut down. You are charged for the entire time your container is running. Now, wouldn't it be better if you were only charged for the time it takes for your app to actually process the request? Well, that's a possibility too. But in this case, your app won't be allocated any CPU when no requests are active. So essentially, you need to choose which model works best for you. And remember the Knative stuff we spoke about earlier? Well, Knative is an open source project built on top of Kubernetes. So if Cloud Run ends up getting too expensive in the longer run, you can take back control and move to Kubernetes just like that. Cloud Run is a deep topic. I can probably make a dedicated video on just pricing and its implications. Guys, let me know if you want me to make an in-depth series on Cloud Run. Drop in a comment if you want it. Now, if you love Cloud Run and want to explore how you can save costs further while maintaining scale, you should absolutely check out this video which will take things to a whole new level. Do like, share and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful and don't forget, I am your tech bot. You're on YouTube and hopefully in real life.